In 1966, Ford Motor Company took on the biggest challenge it had ever taken on before. The automaker's racing team attempted to win the 24 Hours of Le Mans, the world's most prestigious automobile race. The historic race and events leading up to it are the subject of the new movie, Ford vs. Ferrari, starring Matt Damon and Christian Bale. While the movie is packed with plenty of drama, action, and a few tears, here's the true story of how Ford changed racing history. Warning. Spoilers ahead. The story begins three years earlier, in 1963. In an attempt to remedy his company's shortcomings against General Motors in the sales room and on the track, Henry Ford II put together a deal to buy out Ferrari, who, at the time, owned the most dominant team in racing. His intent was both racing alongside the iconic Italian brand and spreading Ford's influence on a more global scale. However, when the deal went very sour, Mr. Ford, Ferrari has a message for you, sir. What did he say? He said Ford makes ugly little cars and in ugly factories. And uh, he called you fat, sir. It ignited one of the most famous rivalries in motorsports history. Ford decided there was only one place to truly get back at Ferrari. On the racetrack. Ford's race of choice? The 24 Hours of Le Mans, the world's most acclaimed endurance race that held more clout internationally than any other motorsport competition. The Detroit automaker would proceed to make a multi-million dollar investment into its Le Mans program. However, Ford wouldn't only fare poorly at the 1964 Le Mans, but for the entire year overall, as not a single Ford car finished a race in the entire 1964 season. Growing more and more frustrated, Ford finally took the program to Carroll Shelby, owner of Shelby American, and a former Le Mans winner himself, played in the film by Matt Damon. Ford brought to Shelby its GT40 race car that its engineers had developed with the help of racing company Lola Cars. After the car's failures at multiple races in recent years, Ford gave Shelby one goal, win. We know how to do more than push paper. Go ahead, Carol. Go to war. Integral to the GT's development would be Shelby team member Ken Miles, played in the film by Christian Bale. Miles was an English driver and mechanical engineer who had already played a major part in the development and success of Shelby's AC Cobra race cars. Miles helped the Shelby team address many of the Ford car's issues and did extensive testing on it. But after Ford chose to change out the car's engine at the last second before the 1965 24 Hours of Le Mans, all of its GT40s failed to finish the race. Ferrari would go on to win, making it the brand's fifth Le Mans victory in a row. As Ford's desire to take Ferrari down a peg grew, so did Shelby's commitment to the GT. The team and Miles continued their work, boosting the car's horsepower using some very primitive methods. As shown in one particularly memorable scene from the film, the team attached scotch tape and cotton yarn to the car to assess the direction of airflow while the car was in motion. They discovered there were issues with the air ducting, and a few simple fixes helped add 76 horsepower to the car. They also proceeded to add lighter magnesium wheels, grippier tires, and better brakes. As the 1966 racing season began, Ford's newly improved GT40 would win both the famous 24 hours of Daytona and the 12 hours of Sebring endurance races, both times with miles behind the wheel. Suddenly, the upcoming Le Mans held more significance than a potential victory for Ford over Ferrari. With his wins at Daytona and Sebring, a victory for Ken Miles at Le Mans would give the driver the triple crown, something that had never been accomplished in racing history. Ford would enter eight cars into the 1966 24 Hours of Le Mans, with three of them managed by Carroll Shelby. One, driven by Ken Miles and New Zealander Denny Holm, the second team, featuring American drivers Dan Gurney and Jerry Grant, and the third car, piloted by New Zealand racers Bruce McLaren and Chris Amon. Meanwhile, Ferrari entered only two cars in the race, confident that after winning the past five races, a sixth victory was imminent. In very anticlimactic fashion, Ferrari's two cars would fail to finish the race, with both being declared unable to continue by lap 227. By the race's halfway point, it was clear that a Ford car would be taking home the trophy. But it was the race's end that would make the 1966 24 Hours of Le Mans one of the most controversial finishes in racing history. As the final lap neared, three of Ford's cars were at the front, with the lead two driven by Miles' team, 
followed by McLaren and Eamon. Miles had been driving record-setting laps, and the historic Triple Crown win for him was clear in sight. However, Ford's public relations team had other plans, opting for a literal photo finish. Ford requested that Miles slow down and finish side by side with McLaren for a picture that would truly emphasize the company's historic dominance at that year's race. After brief objection from Miles, he finally agreed to the decision, believing it would result in a tie for the Ford team. But this wasn't the case as Miles and McLaren finished the race alongside one another. Instead of declaring the race a tie, Le Mans organizers stated that the car that had covered the most amount of ground was the winner. Technically, McLaren and Eamon's GT40 had been lined up a mere 8 meters behind Miles' car at the start of the race. Despite being the fastest driver, Miles had lost. The controversial decision left Miles robbed of what would have been a historic victory and lifetime achievement. While the driver was left devastated by his unnecessary loss, Ford celebrated its win for American racing and big money. Despite his devastation, Miles didn't waste any time returning to the track, beginning work on Ford's newly developed J car in preparation for the 1967 season. However, just one month after Le Mans, while testing the car, Miles was killed in a horrific crash. Thanks to the contributions of Miles and Shelby, Ford would go on to win the 1967, 1968, and 1969 Le Mans races and establish itself as a dominating force in the world of motorsports. However, Miles would remain relatively unheard of outside the racing community. Fortunately, his legacy has been brought to the public's attention with Ford vs Ferrari. Although the film tells a story as much about tragedy as it is about triumph, it highlights the accomplishments of two men, one relatively unknown, who helped change the course of racing history in America.